Hmm. And they call it Grenada Independent 50th Independence Day now. Yeah, no. I'm joking as usual, you know. When I'm saying a joke thing, I see a whole heap of Grenadians now. Okay? I see a whole heap of Grenadians now. Modern day Grenadians who claim you're Grenadians, but you know absolutely nothing about your history now. Now, now you see me. I, when it comes to this Grenadian thing, okay, listen keenly. Isn't very, very keenly. I could be, if I wanted to be, the Grenadian Prime Minister. Mm. Mm. This Prime Minister now, he's Grenada. Is it? What's the other country? There's a couple other countries he's Prime Minister of, isn't he? Yeah. I'm losing touch with this whole change, you know. And um, he's meant to be very good, people say. People say he's going to be good and I'm going to give him a chance, you know. Because that's that's the name of the game. You can't cuss, you can't do anything. He's just come in power. Give the man a chance now. And what he's got going for him hmm, is his age. I like the way they pick someone younger but i'm afraid that sometimes that lack of experience no? the lack of guile no? mm -hmm. i personally don't think he's exactly he's what grenada needs right in this moment okay i think grenada needed me in this present time but but i i believe so okay I believe Grenada needed the next person to take the baton from Maurice Bishop would have been me. Why? Because Maurice Bishop took the baton for my relative. Okay? He, my relative, deep, deep relative. I can't tell you how close. But it's not no far, far business. It's, uh, it was actually my grandfather's brother. Okay. And um, he's the person who shaped Grenada. Okay. And um, if I had to be the leader of Grenada right now, they'd probably assassinate me within the first 24 hours. He did. Because... They just put a hit on me. The hit squad will come for me. <laughs> because in my uh, in Ogori, you know, when you been when they submitted me to give my first speech, now, and I'm submit some. You say, look, talk at the thing. It's time for you to address not only the island but the nation. Yeah, no. but that's the thing. These people, look, look. Let me explain something to you right now. All Grenadians in the world, listen to me keenly. You know, if you go to certain monster parts of the world and you tell people where you're from, go to Australia and tell people where you're from. How much Australians heard of Grenada? Go to Romania and go tell people where you're from. They, they, they've never heard of it, right? Right. Now, do you know why that is? Whose fault is that nobody knows what heard of Grenada? I remember a Muslim man once said to me, he said, talk at the thing, what do I think of what's happening in Syria at the moment? You know, when the Syria thing started. And I says, tell me something. What do you think of what's happening in Grenada at the moment? He said, well, what's that? What, what's that? He said, I said, there you go. He's never heard of it, you see? I said, well, so... Why do you expect me to give a shit what's happening in your region? You haven't even heard of my fucking island's name. No. Okay. Now, whose fault is that? It's not the people them outside of Grenada's forts that no one's ever heard of an island. If you are a leader, a blood clot prime minister of a country or a president, see, don't you think 
it's okay. Don't you look? Look how much. It's nothing to the size of the Highland. See, look at Venezuela. Look at Bolivia. Look at all them place them islands there. How come? How come? People hear about them islands. Why do people know about Cuba? Sure. Right, because they get certain radical pussy. Why did people? Why did the world hear of Maurice Bishop? Right? Why did they invade Bishop and lie? Invade my little island called Grenada. Why? Because they lied, the Americans, fucking Ronald Reagan, and said that Bishop is turning Grenada into another Cuba because he's there doing the whole heap of bad deals of Castro. Okay, then. So. When you or you people, greater people, is going and um, jumping up and down and doing a whole heap of things all weekend and celebrating and dancing and going crazy, I don't do none of that. You do? I look at the status quo, the demographic of my island. Okay, and I know why nobody's heard of this goddamn island. Because you've got all these meek prime ministers who have no world clout who can't go on no world stage, okay, and do anything controversial, say anything uncontroversial, right? So, the same Grenadian Prime Minister, check what I'm saying to you, listen keenly, you know, all your stupid people in other world, right? And when I say stupid people, stupid Grenadian people who don't know about how this thing's set, listen to me fucking keenly, listen once more to this one. You see when um, Putin start fight with Ukraine, right? You see, after a couple of months, there was an African delegation of African leaders, right? And all enough of them, over 20 odd of them, met with Putin in his cabinet and Putin's people, Russia. Supporting Russia. See? Not the Grenadian Prime Minister and uh, the, 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 the people then. Why? I would have been the first. I, I, see, if I'm leader, I'm the first to reach out to Putin. You see these motherfuckers, they forget. Who gave you the money for your fucking airport, Grenada? Who? Russia. So you, yeah, but yet still you're not there to say, Mr. Putin, we got you. We're supporting you. You know what I mean? You're against the real white supremacy that's got that's had my fucking country the crown colonial rule and we've never been independent ever. Right? So there's nothing to fucking celebrate, you damn stupid Grenadians. Okay? What this is what I'm saying with Grenadian people, you know. They're just not they just they're just not fucking they're just happy to just keep taking whip after whip after whip. You understand? You must be mad. Now and I'm going to show you why I'm fucking vexed with you Grenadian people. Listen to me good. Because it's my job. As I said to you. I, 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 listen. As I said. Do you want to be Prime Minister? No I don't. Because they assassinate me first the first hour. Because I'm heavy. I'm real about this shit. Are you crazy? Are you fucking mad? Me? Don't be stupid. I'm going to fucking lead from afar. Watch and see. I remember, you know something my people. I had a Facebook once here. Yeah? Um... And, you know, it was also a Grenadian thing, yeah? And I was, the, the government boy them was coming on the Facebook, Mitchell boy them, and they got me shut down. They got me shut down. The, the people in Grenada got my, my fucking channel shut down because I was against white supremacy. Right. For fuck's sake. Now, the greatest leader, the person who shaped Grenada, and uh, Grenada wouldn't be here today. If it wasn't for this man. Right? Okay. So I'm going to help you. I'm going to read a passage to you lot. What no other people do to you motherfuckers. So here we go. You're going to listen good. You listen really keenly. You dig? Because I'm going to read some passage to you. About the greatest. They talk. Remember Jamaica. They make. They always put Nanny Maroon up there. Right? Hmm. So it's my job to show you lot what I go on. You see me, I say? And who your leader is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's my blood clot job to show you what I go on, my people. 
And if you don't know who your leaders is, you finish. You finish. See? So you're going to hear now. I'm going to show you. Because I'm going to read a nice passage to you from books what I'm privy to. None of you lot has got. See, because I come from that family. So I'm going to show you. The success of the Haitian armed struggle sounded a note of awakening. The black and coloured peoples all over the West Indies, the French Revolution was seen as a liberation movement, even more so after the French government decreed political equality for the coloured population of its West Indian colonies in 1792. An emancipation for their slaves now later repelled, repelled by Napoleon in 1794 now. In that year, France and Britain again declared war, and in several of the colonies captured by the British, there was popular uprising aimed at repulsing the British and returning to French revolutionary control. <laughs> Grenada at this stage was festering under the the undiplomatic rule of the Scottish governor, Ninian Holm, who actively aided with the British population against the French Catholics and who used the war between France and Britain as a pretext to declare martial law in Grenada in 1794. You see? This satisfaction mounted steadily among the French and coloured and towards the end of 1794, they began to organise, holding secret nocturnal meetings. The British were uneasy, mm -hmm. but took no precautions against an uprising on account of their fear that such a measure would betray their own weakness and apprehensions. Now, as the organisation deepened, a leader emerged in the person of one of the greatest leaders, the greatest leader that, that Grenada ever had. His name was Julian Fedon. I shall repeat, all Grenadians researched this man at once. His name was Julian, J-U-L-I-E-N, Fedon, F-E-D-O-N. A member of the Grenadian propertied coloured class. Born of a slave mother and a French father. Fredon had inherited his father's estate at Belvedere in St. John's Parish. Fredon's indigenous leadership of the, of the revolutionary movement was formalised in February 1795 when two Grenadians, Charles Nogues and Jean-Pierre Le Valette, returned from a meeting in Guadeloupe with the agent-in-chief of the French Revolution. In the West Indies, Victor Hughes, Nogues and Levant brought back to Grenada arms and ammunition, revolutionary symbols and a large flag on which was inscribed as in French, liberty, equality or death. Okay, that's what it was inscribed when you the war slogan. Mm -hmm. They also bought an authorization naming Fedon leader of the French Revolution in Grenada. Okay, just one second. On March the 2nd, 1795, within days of the return of Nogues and Levet, the, the revolt broke out in Grenada. From their stronghold at Fredon's Belvedere estate, the rebels, the rebels mounted simultaneous attacks on the east and west coast of the island, taking the towns of Grenville and Guave on the first night in the, of the rebellion. Governor House was away from the capital, hunting with, with a party of gentlemen at his country estate at Paraclet. When the news reached them, the governor's party, instead of returning directly to St. George's over the hills, decided to go north to Sattel's and try to return to the capital by boat. But their plan was reported to Fedon's forces by a slave in sympathy with the revolutionaries, and the governor was captured off the coast of Guave 
and imprisoned at Belvedere. <coughs> Fedon's forces built a fortified camp on a strategically located mountains overlooking the Belvedere estate. From that this headquarters, they waged a bloody battle against the British for the next 15 months. Fedon's army was steadily reinforced by slaves who abandoned the plantations and joined the rebels. Mm -hmm. The British, unused to the tropics, were disseminated by illness. A ship from Africa had brought the Bullom fever to Grenada in 1793 and were rapidly overwhelmed by Fidon's fighters. The situation became so serious for the British that, that the acting governor had to send calls for help to Trinidad, St. Vincent and Martinique to secure reinforcements. That's how bad fucking Julian's pussy club rebellion his army was. Mm -hmm. Right? All of these attacks were re repulsed by Fedon's forces. On April the 8th, an attack by 700 British troops on the rebels' camp resulted in the death of Fedon's brother and provoked Fedon into ordering the execution of Ninian House, Ninian Home and 50 other British prisoners held at that camp. You think Fedon was playing games? Come on. For the next six months, the British steadily lost ground and the British population took refuge in the capital. In addition to their mountain strongholds, the rebels established fortifications at Port at Post Royal on Grenada's east coast, though which they controlled Marcus Bay. This became their receiving point for men and materials coming in from the other French islands by way of Trinidad, which was by then controlled by French revolutionaries. By November, Fedon's forces controlled all of Grenada except St. George's. In Britain, the authorities were becoming concerned. They were going to lose Grenada from the inside. A second Haiti was in the making. Mm -hmm. The British were so alarmed by the West Indian uprisings that they dispatched a huge fleet of reinforcements from England under the command of General Ralph Abercrombie. The fleet encountered storms along the way, so that only 2,000 troops arrived in Barbados in December 1795. Now, after putting down uprisings in St. Lucia and St. Vincent, Abercrombie proceeded to Grenada, where he outlined a plan to surround Fidon's strongholds in the hills. After the long winter of fighting, Fidon's forces were exhausted and short of weapons and ammunition. The British had successfully attacked Post Royal in March and the rebels losing 300 men in the battle had been forced to retreat to their strongholds in the hills. By the time Abercrombie arrived in June 1796, the remaining re rebels were concentrated in four camps in the interior of the island and the British were able to surround them. After a year and a half of struggle, Fidon's free freedom fighters were crushed. Nearly all of the leaders were captured and 38 were executed by the British. Others included many of the slaves who had participated in the revolution were deported to Honduras. Fedon, however, was never captured. Fedon, however, was never captured and he is believed to have drowned while trying to escape in Trinidad. Well, no one knows that. Grenada was left in ruins. Many estates had been burned, destroying sugar and rum works, livestock and crops worth over two million pounds. One quarter of the island's slave population perished. The defeat of Fidon's forces meant the final obliteration of the French power on the island, with most of the French and coloured population either killed or banished from the island. Those who remained were deprived of their civil and political rights and their properties were seized and given to the crown. This resulted in another wave of immigration to Trinidad and the elimination of the French plantocracy as a, as a Grenadian social class. Fridon is honoured by modern Grenadians as their first revolutionary leader and he's 
bearded silhouette appears on walls and buildings deep in the Grenada countryside. His final military defeat is less important than his success, immobilizing a powerless population to demand their freedom from an oppressive ruling class. Fidon's rebellion symbolizes to Grenadians the potential of mass organization and a president in their own history for seizing power from below. Okay. Now, what I never said is, Fredon actually came from um, the Toussaint Louverture's um, Haitian Revolution. That's where he came from. He left at that and he came over Nessa to fight. You understand? Yeah. Okay. And that's, um, I'm just looking to see if it's in here on this part. Um, but Fredon my people is the, the Grenadian people he, and and is a great is the greatest we had you understand he's the greatest um is he look finally there were the grievances of the slaves traditionally analy analyzes of the Fidon's rebellion generally ignore the fact that there were some 24,000 slaves on Grenada in 1790 roughly 12 times the white and coloured populations combined. No uprising on the scale of Fidon's rebellion would have been possible without the active participation of the slaves. The slaves were not concerned with the political rights of free men, nor, as some writers seem to believe, with the advantages of French culture over British. The fundamental injustice of the slave system itself were the underlying cause of the armed struggle which began in 1795. You did? Yeah. See? So I'll just give you a little bit. So the French Revolution of 1789 sent shockwaves across the slave societies in the Caribbean, while the American War of Independence had aroused some interests of the West Indies. It was the French Revolution, with its motto of liberty, equality and fraternity, which profoundly symbolised the possibility of overthrowing, overthrowing the old social order, these shockwaves provoked their first explosion in, in Haiti, then known as Saint-Dominique. Saint-Dominique in 1789 was a highly stratified society dominated by a small white plantocracy with a sizable white and, and coloured middle class and an oppressed mass of black slaves. The French Revolution struck this society like a thunderclap. Although the Haitian Revolution began in 1791 as an attempt by the free coloured to gain political rights, it soon escalated into a massive uprising by the slaves under the leadership of the slave coachman Toussaint L'Overshore. The rebels wanted to prevent Saint-Dominique from falling to the British since the British stood for a return to the status quo, while the French Revolutionary regime promised in some emancipation and equality. By 1793, the slaves had taken complete control of Saint-Dominique and they proceeded to beat back repeated attacks by British forces sent out from Jamaica to retake the island. The success of the Haitian armed struggle, Haitian, ha Haiti armed struggle sounded a note of awakening to black and coloured peoples all over the West Indies. The French Revolution was seen as a liberation movement, even more so after the French government, government decreed political equality for the coloured population of the West Indies colonies in 1792, an emancipation from the slaves later repealed by Napoleon in 1794. In that year, France and Britain again declared war, and in several of the colonies captured by the British, there were popular uprisings aimed at repulsing the British and French and returning to French revolutionary control. Okay. So that's what we have right there. So you got the history of your greatest goddamn leader. You understand? Okay? And now, when you Grenadians now, I want to who celebrate your Independence Day, just remember, for if it wasn't for this man here, yeah? He, you know something? With a little more manpower, they would have defeated them. And the, 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 these the Grenada would have been... He, great he, Grenada would have been talked on in the same vein as everyone knows about Haiti. You understand? It was that close. He was that close, my people. Let's see how much reinforcements they had to get. So Julian Fredon, 
Okay, Grenadians, you, you're not good at this, my people. You're not good. Where Jamaicans are great at keeping their heroes. That's why everyone knows about Nani Maroon. But no one knows about Rascal. Tusselov. I mean, Julian Fedon is my job as my as a, one of the greatest Grenada historians out here. Me. Mm -hmm. Because I have to be, isn't it? Okay. So I'm trying to show you, because of my family lineage, and I'm trying to show you, okay, that there's a travesty that you people do not know of Julian Fedon, okay? You hail him, you put him out there, you put his name out there as one of the greatest revolutionary leaders throughout the black world. And that's it. It's that simple. Okay, throughout the black world, throughout Africa, Caribbean, South America, everywhere. You see me I say? Right. And then Mandessa, the Aborigines needed in Australia. At the time, that's it's them Mandessa, but he just happened to be Yasa, our own Grenadian. Accept it, my people, and that's it. You understand? Just accept this. What I'm showing you is, is your history lesson. Because if I don't do it, as my African brothers say, someone's got to do it. Okay? Thank you. So now, when you dare and you're doing your stupid thing and you're drinking a holy puff fucking drink till you're intoxicated, before you drink, she give her toast to Julian Fredon. And after you're intoxicated and you wake up, remember to teach your grandchildren about this great man. So they can keep the story going on. Your children, your grandkids, your great grandkids. You dig? Right. And that's what you come to this channel for. To get knowledge. Subscribe to prescribe your hand, you don't. Know? And remember this. We're not independent. We will never be in free from the crown colonial rulers. Until you lot go and demand reparation, demand they remove every control of your island, the, the um, Crown Colonial rulers, you okay? And Buckingham Palace, and you lot are gone clear. Subscribe to prescribed antidote.